Chemistry exam tip number one. What to do if your question says compare? The most important thing is you talk about both things. Start off by saying what this is and what that is. And then make sure you talk about how they might be similar or how they might be different. In doing this, ensure that you use chemistry in your answer. That's talking about structure, bonding, forces, properties, any of the stuff that you've learnt in chemistry. Chemistry exam tip number two, what to do when asked to explain or describe things. Firstly, look at how much a question's worth and add that many dot points to your answer box. If a question's worth two marks, put two dot points down and then try and write to those two dot points. Explaining things in chemistry, it's important to use the words you've learnt in chemistry. So think about the key words from a topic. That might be collisions, frequency of collisions, proportion of collisions. It might be active site, bonding to active site, things like that. Annotated diagrams are okay. They help you explain things in words you might not have. But make sure your diagram is annotated. Highlight the key points that you're trying to make. Lastly, you're in chemistry. So chemical equations are really, really good to put in your responses. Chemistry exam tip number three, looking at intermolecular forces. All these things here are related to the intermolecular forces within a molecule. Now you're in chemistry, so you need to be talking about chemistry. And there's nothing more like chemistry than bonding. And that is what intermolecular forces are. So if you get a question about viscosity or the properties of a fuel, about separation, about why things are attracted to a particular phase, about the melting points of fats and oils, about protein structure and tertiary structure, you have to refer to the intermolecular forces. To do this, you need to be talking about the structure of a compound and how that provides its intermolecular force. For example, a hydroxyl group will provide the opportunity for hydrogen bonds. And that way you're referencing the structure and the intermolecular force, which is chemistry. Chemistry exam tip number five, and realistically, this should be number one. Include chemistry in your response. It may sound pretty weird, but it's so true. You are studying chemistry, so you need to make sure you include the stuff you've learned in chemistry in your responses. A lot of the time, by default, students generally just go with their general understanding of what's happening. They try and put it in their own words, a bit too much, perhaps. You need to make sure that you are using the chemistry that you have learnt. What that means is you show chemical equations where possible. You talk about the functional groups and the structure of molecules. You include chemical formulas. Another really big one is the chemical bonding. So this is where intermolecular forces come into it. Talk about the chemical reactions. Talk about reactants and products. And again, down here, it shows you a few key words, not the be all and end all, but it starts to think about what you should include. Chemistry exam tip number four, organic structures. The main thing is know the difference between the things below and read the question carefully to make sure you know what you're looking for. This table is in your data booklet. So it helps you understand what your answer should look like. A molecular formula just shows you the atoms present. A structural formula shows exactly what the molecule looks like with all the bonds included. Note, this little dude here, which is the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen, often overlooked in a structure. The semi-structure is a nice clean line which doesn't show the bonds to hydrogen. It just shows you CH2, 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 CH, so on and so forth. Our skeletal structure is more condensed and only shows the backbone of our molecule. It does, however, show you the functional group bonds. So watch for that. These are the structures you need to know. Chemistry exam tip number six, about listing, identifying, or stating a specific number of things. If a question asks you to state two factors that influence something or other, make sure you only show two, because the examiner only cares about the first two things you put down. If you go and do the rest of the exam and then come up with a great idea later on, don't be afraid to go back, but make sure you're clear about the ones that you want the examiner to actually correct. 
You do, though, however, need to be careful that you don't contradict yourself. So you don't say one thing and then two seconds later say the opposite thing to what you were saying beforehand. If you do that, you have the potential to lose the mark that you actually got right in the first place. And finally, now be short and to the point. If you have to list, identify or state, that's all you need to do. You don't need to explain. Just be short and to the point. It saves time. Chemistry exam tip number seven, check your facts. This has in particular to do with redox. In chemistry, there are certain definites and certain facts that you have learned. This comes in play particularly with redox and you have acronyms to remember those facts. But these are easily overlooked when trying to answer questions. So the biggest one with redox is oil rig and red cats. Oxidation is the loss of electrons and reduction is the gain. What this means is that when you're answering a question or you're writing an equation and it's an oxidation reaction, you need to ensure that you have shown losing electrons and that those electrons are on the right. The second thing is that reduction occurs at the cathode. So you always need to make sure that your reaction at the cathode is a reduction reaction, which is gaining electrons. Lastly, this is to do with the flow of electrons in a circuit. It always goes towards the cathode because that's where reduction occurs. Chemistry exam tip number eight. Now this is about dot points in written questions. First thing you need to do is check how many marks are allocated to a written question. And what you can then do is break your answer up into dot points, which can allow you to make sure that you hit the marks that are required. If a question is worth two marks, show two dot points. And that way you can write down two things to get you those two marks. Likewise, if a question is worth three marks, write three dot points evenly spaced out in the response section and then start filling those dot points in. You know what? Sometimes a dot point could be a chemical equation. This is chemistry after all, so include chemistry in your response. If you can write a chemical equation to help you explain the question, do so. Chemistry exam tip number nine. This one is all about Le Chatelier's principle versus rates of reaction. These two concepts are often talked about in questions and time and time again, they are confused. How these are confused is the fact that people start using the wrong theory to answer questions. What you need to be aware of is what is the question asking me and what theory do I need to draw on? Is it to do with Le Chatelier's principle and opposing a change? or is it to do with rate of reaction, and is it about collision theory? To help with this, this tip is all about key words, and the idea that Le Chatelier's principle, key words involved are things like direction favored, or yield and percentage. All these questions tell you that you need to reference Le Chatelier's principle. On the other hand, words like fast, slow, speed, all talk about the rate of reaction, and therefore you should talk about collision theory. Chemistry exam tip number 11, and this is about key phrases to use when talking about enzymes or coenzymes. Number one is here. Fundamental to enzyme function is their unique active site. That means that this active site is unique and only catalyzes a very, very, very specific type of molecule. Second key phrase to talk about is the fact that, that molecule called the substrate, it forms bonds with the active site. So the important thing about this is the Enzyme can't work unless the substrate forms a bond with the active site. Your third key phrase when discussing anything about enzymes or coenzymes is the fact that what they do is they catalyze reactions, which means they lower the activation energy. So that's it. If you see a question about enzymes, remember the active site, bonds forming with the active site, and the fact that we have a lower activation energy because of that. Chemistry exam tip number 12. This one's about calculations in chemistry. Now, a massive issue that people tend to have is they rush through calculations and they don't actually write down what they're doing. In a chemistry exam, it is crucial that before you go and reach for your calculator, you write down what you're planning on calculating first. That way, if you accidentally stuff up something in the calculator, at least the examiner knows what you meant to do. So therefore they can give you marks for the idea of the calculation. The second important thing is to identify and state what you're calculating in your calculation. For example, 
are you finding the overall energy released from a particular reaction or is it the amount of energy from a particular sample of your fuel? Lastly, try not to round anything until the end of the question. Use the answer recall button in your calculator and don't start from scratch each time. Chemistry exam tip number 13, and this one is to do with the rates of chemical reactions. For many of you, this is a no brainer, but fundamental to the rate of a chemical reaction is how frequently molecules collide. So whenever you're talking about a rate of a chemical reaction, ensure that you include the terms frequency of successful collisions and talk about how this may increase or decrease. You really should have four stock responses for rates of chemical reactions, which are basically implanted in your brain. So whenever you see a question about rates of reaction, you simply rewrite the same response. Now there's four things that we learn that change the rate of a chemical reaction. Those are concentration, temperature, surface area, and catalysts. All of your responses should mention the frequency of successful collisions.